Tonight, tonight, at the coming Theater to you live in at Singapore, the <laughs> is uh, the Jazz Society of Singapore uh, concert. A very special evening. Jeremy Montero, Laura Fiji, the world-renowned and recently knighted jazz singer from Holland. We are so pleased and honored to have them both with us today in studio. Laura, welcome. Jeremy, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you. It is great to have both of you uh, in in the studio. My apologies. I thought the concert was two nights. I thought it was last night and tonight. Jer did I get that wrong, Jeremy? Uh, no, we, we changed it so you didn't get the memo. It's just uh, tonight's the one big show. One Got night it. only. Got yeah. it. Okay. My apologies uh, for that. I, I was thinking it was two nights. Laura, welcome to Singapore. Thank you. You're usually based uh, in Holland? Yes. I live in Holland. I was born there, so that's my country. Awesome. Yes. Your career is so storied, and, and many people know who you are. Give us an overview for, for some folks that may not have been into the jazz scene for whatever reason. Let's hope they will be right after this interview. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your history and about, uh, about your performing life. Um, well, I, I used to be in a girl group, and uh, I was discovered at that time as a jazz singer. As a, you know, I was just going to the pianist and say, okay, let us play something like all of me. So this manager said, oh, if, if I have the time and, 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 and am I the right place, we should do something about it. And in 1990, I called him because at that time he was A&R manager at Phonogram. Hmm. And I said, do you remember what you promised? <laughs> and so we did. And it started in 1990. Uh, in the meantime, after 32 years, I've got 17 albums. Wow. Uh, traveled all over the world. Mainly Asia is my biggest market. Hmm. And enjoying it, still enjoying it every time. And it's great to be here with Jeremy. Wow, oh. so many questions, Laura. <laughs> Let's stick with Asia for a second. What is it about Asia or Asian audiences that keeps bringing you back? Um, I think the, the, the music, of course. Um, there's something about this music that they love. It's recognition and emotion, uh, two, two very, uh, very important ingredients for Asians. That's what I found out. And it's... I've got full of it. <laughs> I've got plenty of it. <laughs> Fabulous. And tell us about, you said you've played all over the world. Tell us about some of your big gigs or people you've performed with, that kind of thing. Well, of course, I also tour in Holland and have played beautiful uh, theatres, the, the Royal Theatre Carré, where I produced my own show with the Metropole Orchestra. And as a guest, I had Michel Legrand. So that was something. And, but I've been to Brazil, to, uh, uh, in Europe, we've toured as well. So, yeah, I've been quite around. And, 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 and of course, you've run into this guy that's sitting on your right a few uh -huh. times, Jeremy Montero, of course, old friend of the show, uh, longtime friend. I won't say old, longtime friend of the show, okay. Jeremy. Uh, 45 years you've been performing. Tell us about your, uh, your relationship with, with Laura and, and talk to us a little bit about the concert tonight as well and what we can expect. Sure. Well, I first uh, got to work with Laura about 15, 18 years ago with the Singapore Symphony Orchestra. And that was a really wonderful show and a great uh, uh, and an astonishing revelation of this amazing singer. Uh, and after that, of course, we played a bunch of shows together here in Singapore as well in, uh, as in Shanghai. Uh, which was nice. We played the International Jazz Day show in Shanghai a few years ago. And then Laura very kindly uh, and, her, and her record company uh, asked me to produce her last latest record called Laura Goes East. And uh, that was just a wonderful working experience to work with a consummate professional, a wonderful singer. And, um, and, and the story goes on with our concert tonight at the uh, Capitol Theatre in Singapore with the Jazz Association Singapore Orchestra. Jazzo, it's called. Jeremy, here's a chance to maybe embarrass Laura in the nicest possible way. You're a singer, a composer, a conductor. What is it about Laura that makes her so special to perform with? There it comes, there yeah. it comes. <laughs> well, you know, when we recorded together uh, about three, four years ago, I, I, I realized that Laura's got an amazing and natural and organic singing style. So I call her my organic singer. There's nothing put on about her. It's just pure uh, talent and just oozing naturalness, organicness. 
And so, uh, and that's really why I, I enjoy working with her so much, you know. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, the operative word in playing music is play. But sometimes we get so serious, like a heart attack, and forget that it's play. And uh, whenever I get a chance to uh, play with Laura, it's just that. It's great playtime. Let's flip it. Laura, same question to you about Jeremy. Well, I've got to uh, uh, to say that we, we've worked very close together on the, my latest album, of course. We were a whole week in the studio. And uh, I think we're on the same, uh, how do you call it? Same Wavelength. wave line. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and what I loved about it uh, is that there's a lot of humor and you need a lot of humor to enjoy mm. what you do. Mm. So, and, and yeah, we loved it. We were, we're laughing constantly, actually, the two of us, <laughs> besides making music. Yeah. Now, the Jazz Association uh, of Singapore is calling us the Pinnacle Concert uh, tonight at the, uh, at the Capitol Theater, 8, 8 p.m. Tickets still available. Uh, please get them if you can. What, what is going to be special about this concert tonight, Jeremy? That I know there's a, a long list of wonderful musicians, in addition to yourself, who are performing. Well, of course, the, uh, most of the musicians are Singaporean. And uh, on drums is Tamago, who's played many, many times with Laura. Uh, on the trumpet is a great lead trumpet player from the United Kingdom by the name of Tom Walsh. And he's played with uh, Quincy Jones and is on the latest Michael Will Play record as well. Uh, so we, he's, he's our uh, visiting uh, principal trump, uh, lead trumpeter who we invite the, over the last five, six years. Nice. Uh, great trumpet player from Malaysia, Eddie Wern, another great Malaysian musician, a leader of his own big band, Julian Chan. And uh, wonderful uh, Singapore-based musicians like Sean Letts. And uh, also with, with us uh, is the newly appointed associate music director of the Jazz Association, uh, Chok Karong, who will be playing the piano and conducting Taking Turns with me, playing musical chairs. So, yeah, it's going to be, you know, and the music's great. The arrangements, uh, Laura has wonderful uh, 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 arrangers that she works with. Uh, people like Johan Plomp and uh, others. And uh, I think that uh, it's just a swinging show. I mean, last night when we when we did a rehearsal, we felt that, oh, wow, this is going to be a wonderful show tonight. Let me awesome. ask you about the swinging show part, because I saw you guys just before Christmas, and I said to Glenn, there's something about the Singapore Jazz Association that sounds quintessentially Singaporean or Southeast Asian. The show was called, was it Kaleidoscope? Oh, one, yes, yes. Which you had, you, you made it sound Singaporean. I don't have the musical vocabulary to explain why that is, but how do you make a jazz orchestra sound local? Well, because there was a special performance, you know, besides playing, you know, we are very much steeped in the tradition of the American style big band. Mm. And, and that's really uh, an authenticity with, our, with actually playing jazz is very important to us. But we feel that we need to create a new sound that's distinctly and uniquely Singaporean. And that was what that show was yeah, about, Kaleidoscope, sure, with all the Chinese and Indian and Malay instruments. It was really nice. I'm glad you guys were there. It's fabulous. Yeah. Laura, when you are, are preparing for big shows like this, it's a lot, you know, you're on stage, you're center stage, you've got to protect your instrument uh, and, and also have it ready, <laughs> ready to go. And so we actually thank both of you for being here to, to talk with us for, uh, for a, a bit of time this morning because uh, I, I know that probably normally you'd just as soon be, you know, getting into your, into your performance mode. But how do you do that? How do you, as a professional jazz singer, get your get your head into the performance before you get started do you have a routine do you have a anything you do <laughs> I don't. anything you eat anything you drink i don't <laughs> really i don't i you, first of all i was not um taught how to sing so i never had singing classes i can't read music so everything i do is by feeling interesting um i don't warm up <laughs> uh, i have a very bad habit i smoke mm. so I don't do anything. I don't drink anything special. I don't eat anything. The only thing I don't do is eat just before a performance. That's all. Yeah. Because then I'm, you know, stuffed. <laughs> do you have one of those, like, spray bottles? You know, no, you're spraying nothing at your all. And nothing. And nothing bothers me. <laughs> wow. Air conditioning doesn't bother me. Or, 
you know, there's some people who were like, oh, turn off the air conditioning. Oh, my voice. Oh, and I, <laughs> no. I can't no. work under these conditions. Oh, no. Because no. like I, 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 I think was, Neil still says that. I, I can't work I under these on a certain temperature in this room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I refuse to enter the studio. Yeah. Green M&Ms. Exactly. exactly. Only green. Yeah. Only green. <laughs> but I, I think, and, and Jeremy will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was Whitney Houston who performed here once and, and asked for the air conditioning to be switched off. Uh, or maybe, my, maybe Mariah Carey. But the point is, singers well, do often make big if demands. It's, if it's because of the, her voice or mm. it's just because it's too cold. Mm. Because that's one thing when you come to Singapore. <laughs> yeah. When you're outside, you're melting. When you're inside, you're freezing, which is just the other way around in Holland. <laughs> and so it is cold. The yeah. air conditioning is cold. Yes. That's all. That, that's, that's what we're not used to. But the question I was going to ask, uh, many years ago I interviewed a singer called Mick Hutnell who sings with uh, simply red mm. and he's, he gave exactly the same answer as you he doesn't warm up he just goes out there belts yeah. out these huge notes and i've interviewed other singers that detail a really long and elaborate warm-up process of mm. vocal yeah. singing from the chest and not from the head and doing this and doing that i have that. no idea what i'm doing is i'm it, just doing it is it as simple as that is it just genetics is it just good luck? i guess so i guess so because i think the more you think about it the worse it gets mm. It's true. I, I'm just going on, and and the only thing I do is just tell stories, and the stories have beautiful melodies. That's all. I don't need to warm up to talk to you guys. Mm. I don't need to warm up to have a conversation with somebody. So why should I warm up when I'm doing actually the same thing on stage? We're talking with... Wow internationally renowned jazz singer Laura Fiji performing tonight at the Capitol Theater here in Singapore, the Jazz Association's Pinnacle Concert 2023. And Jeremy Montero, jazz maestro, cultural medallion recipient, and also the musical director for tonight. Uh, Jeremy, what can we, musically, what are we expecting tonight from the from the songs you've put together and and the, the mood, the vibe you're going to try to create for us? At, at such a lovely space to hear a concert at the Capitol Theater. Yes, indeed. So this is our third Pinnacle concert. And, you know, uh, the Jazz Association Singapore Orchestra, Jazzo, as we are also known as, plays concerts uh, with community songs for the, out in the community. And we kind of play in a kind of uh, middle ground music uh, as also. But every every year or so, we try to do what we call a pinnacle, where we play the, the sort of state of the art of, of the jazz in, of jazz in Singapore. And uh, this is the third one, and I'm just glad and so happy that Laura's going to be a part of it. Yeah. We play a couple of uh, instrumental tunes, one that I wrote and one that uh, Associate Music Director Chuck Corone composed. And, and then that's it. The rest then we'll hand over uh, to Laura to do her storytelling and uh, weave her magic with the audience. Wonderful. Jeremy, oh. this is 45 years that you've been performing. You started when you were five. Yes. Uh, five years old. <laughs> uh, so that was nice. Uh, give us a give us a couple of highlights for yourself um, uh, of over the years. And and I have to preface that by saying, it, especially in recent years, you have been such a huge proponent of of helping the next generation of musicians. This has been a real hallmark of your professional career. In addition to being an amazing musician, but from your perspective, what do you think back on over forty five years of what's meaningful to you? Well, um, I, you know, I just completed my 45th year uh, last year and starting my 46th year this Oops. year. Okay. And That's actually it. moving uh, <laughs> kind of um, more into quality rather than quantity. Because, you know, in the last seven years, my output has been equivalent to the preceding 39 years. Really? Yeah, all put together, last seven years. So I think I've, I, I need to slightly pace it better and look for more quality. I'm really very, very interested in uh, symphonic jazz and orchestral music so actually i'm about to embark on a uh, at this uh, tender age of 62 on a graduate uh, uh, diploma in uh, uh, film scoring is that right yeah so oh, just wow. because i really think that in my old age that's what i want to be doing i want to be writing for big bands and for orchestras uh, so so i think this is the time to start studying now <laughs> since i didn't study when i was 16 years old uh, <laughs> I'm very lazy, and uh, so so you know. I think looking forward to much uh, a lot more make music making. Hopefully, make some more music. Laura and I are we talking about possible future projects, uh, and also with the work with the Jazz Association Singapore, which is very important to me. I think takes up it takes some half my bandwidth and but ho the whole of my heart. So really looking forward uh, 
to continue yeah. to do all that. Well, just stepping back a moment into your 45 years, I did ask for questions from our listeners, and mm. we've got one here from Athanasios who asks, question for Jeremy, did he ever perform at the jazz venue somewhere upstairs in the Raffle City Mall in the early 90s? Was a great venue for jazz during that time in the 90s. Yes, that was called the Somerset's Bar, and it went from 1986 until 1990, and it was profitable and full all the way. And then some new F&B director came in and turned it into a Buddha bar with yeah. sheer <laughs> nylon curtains and moved the stage to the center. You know, they say in America, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They fixed it, and it failed. It <laughs> died after that. So Athanasios, you may have touched a nerve there. It sounds like it was a swinging place. It in was, the Somerset's Bar, absolutely. <laughs> and where do people go now for the good jazz regularly? Well, a few places. There's a place called Simply Jazz that I was involved in for a while. Uh, that's at Chimes. And also there's uh, Cool Cats at the Marriott Hotel and uh, the, uh, the Jazz Loft uh, over at Blue Jazz and uh, Maduro who are relocating soon. So there's quite a few places in Singapore to listen to jazz. Maduro is a really nice uh, space. Is. I've seen yes. you there yes. a couple of times. Cigar bar, whiskey bar, yeah. and a very warm and, and intimate uh, yeah. space as well. Is Blue Jazz back? Yes, they're back. And then uh, now their main performance space is upstairs, and they call it uh, the Loft and yeah. Blue Jazz. Yes. Okay, because for a while they were not... Yes, because of COVID, yeah. Right. Oh, that's great. That's good to know, because that yeah. uh, Muhammad Sultan area is, yeah. uh, is, is great. Well, yeah, I was going to say your illustrious career is bringing out the comments. Rob says Jeremy's early 2021 concert at the Capitol Theatre was our first coming out of COVID music night. Thankfully, that audience of us grew to hundreds more into 2021 across 2022. Anyone in Singapore today should go tonight. An awesome treat. Yay! That's from Rob. Yay! Those of you on Facebook Live, we've we've put the link uh, to getting tickets for the concert tonight at the Capitol Theater. Uh, but you can get them, uh, I guess, uh, through the Jazz Association, through Cystic. Uh, Cystic and Book My Show. Book My Show. Both, both bottles. Yeah. yeah, all the usual ones. Jeremy, uh, other other uh, notable moments for you in your career it must be Montreux, right, when you performed in Montreux? Yes, I mean, performing on the main stage of the Montreux Jazz Festival with Chick Corea and we, believe it or not, Crowded House. Crowded, crowded House. Crowded House, yes. <laughs> uh, that was band, a, I think. Yes, and that was a very special moment because every, every year Montreux will invite a, a no-name, and I was a no-name in 1988, to perform on the main stage, and that was just wonderful. Claude Knox. Uh, and that that performance is still available on YouTube. If I've seen it. Yes, it's yes, un, unreal. And it was yeah. what four o'clock in the morning or something. Yes, you were delayed. You were supposed to be on earlier. Yeah, it was supposed to be on at midnight. We went on close to five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, it was wow. a marathon. There were still people. There were people. <laughs> yeah. They were sleeping before our act. But when we started, they all got up and danced. So that's a good thing. It was a very very spirited uh, performance. So those of you that are interested in classic jazz, uh, do Google that because it is still available. Um, you two are have kindly agreed to do a duet for us here mm. in the studio. Would yes. you, you I think would the low part shall sing the high part. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, if you need any backup harmonies, <laughs> don't come to us. <laughs> okay. Now I have to preface this by saying right now we're on Facebook Live. Sometimes Facebook, if they hear a song, they will kick us off. Yeah. Right? Because of rights, perceived rights issues. Oh. Right. So we are gonna we're gonna go ahead and go for this on Facebook Live. For those of you on Facebook Live, if for some reason Facebook kicks us off, that's why, but we're going to carry on. And of course, if you're listening on the radio or streaming us on the audio app, you can listen no matter what. Um, tell us about what you're going to sing for us. Well, uh, as I said before, uh, uh, we are going to, I was discovered uh, by singing a song called All of Me. Yep. Uh, so that's what we're going to do together. Awesome. Right? Beautiful. Yeah. I can't wait. Okay, here we go. Jeremy Montero, Laura Fiji, right here in the studio on Money FM, singing All of Me, a very, very private special edition. W are you going to sing that tonight as well? No. 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 So it's for you. especially wow. for Money we FM flattered. fans Thank tonight. You. Okay, here we go. Uh, Laura and Jeremy, take it away whenever you're ready, folks. was my heart 
So why not take all of me? Absolutely fabulous. Delightful. Thank you. <laughs> so you're warmed up now for tonight. So yeah, no problem. I'm yes. up. <laughs> you can go straight to the gig from here. Wow, that was fabulous. Well, oh. if you haven't got your tickets already, come on now. That was fabulous. Capital Theatre tonight, 8 p.m. Get down there. And it's going to be so much fun because I, I always have a huge interaction with my band, but also with the audience and oh. I they they have to work for me tonight you know they're not just <laughs> sitting and enjoying they'll have to do a lot of things for me oh, okay. and even dance if they want so let's have a party tonight oh that's Fantastic. great and Laura before we go um I, I you have so many albums out there but you also have a new book out tell yes. us about your book well during COVID I mean nothing to do right so we had to do something and then I was cleaning up my cupboards and I saw all these pictures and I thought oh I've done so many things and so many great stories behind it I could even write a book and so I started a book which is a it's a coffee table book with uh, it weighs two and a half kilos <laughs> it's big it's got 200 pages that's a lot of memories <laughs> yeah I've got a lot of memories there's my biography but also my whole career and there's even part where I record with Jeremy oh. and I've asked some people to write something in it and Jeremy did too so the story about the organic singer is in there mm. <laughs> and uh, it's got 300 pictures with great stories anecdotes and everything and the book is called all of me Fabulous. Nice. perfect well, well why don't we just finish off by giving us one of your favorite highlights what has been the key anecdote or highlight in your illustrious career <gasps> oh wow um that's when uh, uh, okay. Jaguar asked me to to uh, they were going to re release a, a, a new car, right? So they've asked me to do a CD for them. Uh, for they were going to give that to their customers, mm. right? Nice. So I did and did a show and everything. Okay, and a few months later, my husband went on uh, on a plane to Spain for business. There was a couple next to them. And they started to talk, and then he said, uh, the guy said, to her, what are you doing? Oh, well, I'm a businessman and everything. And uh, what are you doing? Well, I'm in the real estate. And, oh, does your wife work in your real estate? No, says, says the guy, uh, she works for Jaguar. And apparently now they've got a new car. And, you know, they're giving away CDs of Laura Fiji. So my husband says, oh, really? How nice. <laughs> and this ha really happened, right? So this guy says, uh, so what are you uh, doing? I'm a businessman. Oh, does your wife work in your, uh, with you? And then my husband says, no, she makes CDs for Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That story could not happen very often. So that was awesome <laughs> really that it did happen. It's ridiculous. <laughs> And finally, Laura, you were recently knighted. 
I was. Tell yes. us about that. And congratulations. Well, it, it, it is an enormous honor because that, that's something that somebody else requests to mm. the king, right? And it needs... Um, in Holland. In Holland. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it needs... Uh, a, a, letters from people that really recommend you and it's all about um charity right mm. so i've uh, i've done a lot of charity for various things for children who are sick for animals for world acceptance and all these people wrote letters and so you have to uh, send them to the, uh, yeah, the ministry or, or whatever yeah. mm -hmm. and they decide whether you get it or not so uh, <laughs> when my book was released and I did a, a whole concert after that and it's I didn't know because you're not allowed to know right mm -hmm. so after that I thought well, okay the concert is finished but then he said oh please wait there's a mayor who would like to say something to you and I was going on what is she doing here <laughs> <laughs> and then she started to tell about the king it's a great honor for the king to uh, announce me as knight in the order of Oranje Nassau, what? Orange Nassau. That's that's the and I got a big cross oh. on your on my chest, okay. which you can not allowed to wear <laughs> only if you're invited oh, by the king at his castle. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go, there you go. And 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 so, do we address you differently now? No, not really. Your eminence, no. your, <laughs> no. your your knightedness. Would it be a dame? No, in the yeah, UK, it's not a dame. In the UK, yeah. it would be a dame, right? Mm -hmm. So, but it's not it's not that way in Holland. They they will never, yeah. uh, you know, announce me, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Dame Laura. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it it isn't. It isn't. So it's all right. It's just another highlight in in my life. You see, that's what it is. Every every little thing in my life. Our highlights and this is one of them it's a highlight for us it's the Yo, first time we've awesome. had a dame in the studio <laughs> and, and, and laura i think i can speak for neil and myself you'll always be a dame to us always, oh, always. You. always. neil for me now <laughs> yes. only if you only if you have a sword you can do something anyway uh, jeremy you'll always be a dame for us as well <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> Hey, we want to encourage everyone to get tickets for the concert tonight, the Jazz Association of Singapore Pinnacle Concert Number 3, tonight at the Capitol Theater, 8 p.m., Laura Fiji, jazz singer Jeremy Montero, music director and, and performing, and a whole cast of amazing musicians. Get on Cystic, get on uh, your various booking, uh, ticket booking, and please come tonight. It's going to be a great show. I'm going to be there. I can't wait. Ah, oh, great. And thank you for being with us today on Money Absolutely. FM. Absolutely. It's, it's an honor. It's, it's Absolutely. a pleasure, too. And Jeremy, thank you, and thank thanks you for uh, the accompaniment on the, uh, on the song today. And here's to another 45 years, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs>